Well, so here's the thing. I think blowing a big game lead is worse than blowing a big series lead. Like, blowing a 28 to 3 lead, like blowing that lead within a game, you can't tell yourself we played well if you blew a 28 to 3 lead. <laughs> if the Falcons had Mookie Betts, they win the Super Bowl. <laughs> I'm Hannah Kaiser, and this is the bandwagon. Yeah, yeah, World Series! Yeah. World Series edition. World Series! Our long national nightmare that we'd be forced to watch a fall classic with compelling stakes and a clear narrative was thwarted by the Astros' insistence on being good enough to pull off a historic comeback, but not quite good enough to give us the World Series that 2020 deserves. <laughs> After a couple of incredibly close Game 7s, they're gone, and so are the Braves, leaving us the data darling Rays who represent an internal dichotomy between a hedge fund front office mentality and the lovably underappreciated players on the field going up against these star-studded Dodgers who are definitely not just happy to be here. Just like everyone predicted when the postseason was expanded to 16 teams, it's a matchup of the two best records in baseball. I am not at the poorly lit cavernous Costco that is the newly debuted Globe Life Field, but some fans what? are. And since this is a neutral site World Series taking place at a time when non-essential travel is iffy at best, perhaps those people in attendance are Texans who just haven't picked a rooting interest yet, or more likely you're just watching on TV and your team is one of the other 28. The best way to watch baseball is with an unnecessarily masochistic level of emotional investment, or at least that's my preferred method, and without the obvious <laughs> villains to root against, you might still be in the market for a team to bandwagon. Luckily, that's what we do here. Well, and rather than just tell you who I'm rooting <laughs> for, let's talk about some of the ways you might be making this decision. It's all about you. If you only watch the postseason. Welcome fall weather fans. Unlike some sports commentators, I recognize that being this invested is really only viable as a professional requirement. So maybe you <laughs> didn't even notice that baseball played a 60 game regular season in the midst of the pandemic. And that's fine. As long as you've watched the last few Octobers, you are basically all caught up and ready to root for the Dodgers who are running back the same storyline. Still trying to win their first World Series since 1988 on what is now their eighth straight postseason appearance. Clayton Kershaw is still grappling with the demons that afflict him only ever in October, or at least the narrative around what the expectation that they will. Kenley Jansen is still the closer for better or for worse. And the biggest difference is that now they also have one of the guys who hit a home run against them in the decisive game five of the 2018 World Series. If you were watching that ball classic, you saw Mookie Betts cap off an MVP season with the Red Sox by taking home a ring at the Dodgers expense. Two years later, he is still just as good and now he's on their team. If you love irony and ambiguous endings. Maybe you thought that the final shot of Inception was cinematic genius, <laughs> the way it leaves you not totally sure what you just watched. Well, imagine that the Dodgers built this historically dominant, <laughs> deep dynasty worthy team and then the first World Series they win will forever have an asterisk next to it. Imagine this is the only one they ever win. Forever plagued by the knowledge that they probably could have won just the same in a normal 2020 season, but we'll never know. And don't tell me it's totally legitimate if you would have written off the whole thing as a quarantine fever dream if the Astros won. <laughs> if you love the latest trends! Yeah, so if you're trendy, if you've been watching Emily in Paris, what is that, the Netflix thing, whatever. Okay. This one is easy. The Rays made it this far by uncovering market inefficiencies and then mainstreaming ways to exploit them. They're the reason your dad, or at least my dad, keeps texting you, or at least me, about how starting pitchers only go a single inning this postseason. What's that about? But it is not just their cutting edge analytics and the likelihood that any cost saving strategies that prove effective will soon be decimating labor strength around the sport that makes the Rays the trendy choice. They are also home to the hottest hitter on the planet. Randy Rosarena defected from Cuba five years ago made his Major League debut in 19 games with the Cardinals last year and missed the first month of the shortened season with coronavirus. And now, he has set a record for postseason home runs by a rookie before the World Series <laughs> even starts. He is pretty much the Rays' entire offense, which might not be a winning long-term strategy, but if you are looking to root for a potentially decisive star that most baseball fans haven't heard of, Randy is your guy. I mean, he's everyone's guy. He is so likable that even if he beats you in a dance battle, you'll still stand him. That's Fred Phillips holding up Randy Rosarena signs in multiple games. <laughs> if you're from a hundred years in the past. I tried to overthink this one and make it about the style of play that someone from that era might be most impressed by, which is all 
pitching, all pitching, all pitching would blow their brain. But honestly, if you time traveled from the early 20th century to today with the pandemic and a Donald Trump presidency and women opening their own bank accounts and talking about sports, you have plenty to adjust to. I'm not gonna ask you to root for a franchise you didn't even know existed. The Dodgers play in California now, and no, it doesn't make any sense that they kept the name in a city without trolleys, but they've once again won the pennant, just like they did in 1920. If you're from a hundred years in the future. This one, however, goes to the Rays. In 2120, the Rays definitely do not still play in Tampa, a city that definitely does not still exist amid <laughs> rising sea levels. And I'm assuming that this is a sort of nostalgic, benevolent time traveler who wants to see the city win at least one championship before being swallowed up by the bay. If you love cats. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> if you've ever watched my show and thought, Sure, the baseball content is unparalleled, but I wish she made a bigger deal about how much she loves cats. No First one. of all, thank you. I try. And second of all, the Dodgers rookie pitcher Tony Gonzalez pantomimed licking his paw on a national broadcast of a postseason start Weird. as part of his intro <laughs> package. I like cats. I'm more of a dog person. I don't like cats, but I like Tony. They're small, they're independent, they're soft, they're cuddly when they want to be. I do not like cats, no, he knows that. Not a huge cat guy. Cat class and the guy cat style. We talked about his Catterday shirts last year when he was a mid-season call-up, and the kid has doubled down this season, <laughs> appealing overwhelmingly and exclusively to the overlapping Venn diagram that is people who love their cats and people who love graphic t-shirts. <laughs> and even if you don't fall into that category, I think we can all enjoy imagining the making of that interstitial when someone had to tell Max, Muncy, Kike, and Mookie that Tony, the new guy with long hair and less than a year of major league service, needs him to come talk about cats for a quick second while they're prepping for the, <laughs> the postseason. Cat. If you're just here for the memes! Much to Mike Trout's perpetual frustration, baseball is not a sport that can be won by one man. Memeability, however, absolutely is. And despite many worthy competitors on both sides, the overwhelming favorite in this World Series of GIF and screen making potential is Cody Bellinger. No, see, that was cool, but actually I was talking about the fact that my guy has spent the entire postseason looking high as the Hollywood sign. <laughs> Cody has been gazing off into the middle distance with a look that says, hey, they're the opposite of outs. Why don't we call them ins? So much lately <laughs> that people have started to layer them on top of each other for a multi-Cody verse that we should be careful showing to him. Anyway, here is Cody after watching a particularly fast riff on the bandwagon. If you're just here for the hot guys. Reverse sexism isn't a thing, and also sports are an inherently aesthetic pursuit, so it is perfectly fine to objectify baseball players. Besides, <laughs> attraction is subjective, but Tyler Glasnow of The Rays literally looks like a Gucci model making his acting debut in a prestige drama about ancient Greece. Sometimes you might think that a guy is hot when actually he's just tall, but Tyler Glasnow is so disarmingly beautiful that you might not even notice he's 6'8 until he's standing next to someone else, someone like teammate Kevin Kiermaier, whose eyes I should probably stop talking about before it gets weird, the rest of his face is nice it's too. Weird. If you're more into brawn than beauty, Yandy Diaz and Yandy Diaz's biceps are here for you. And finally, <laughs> if you're looking for some more junk in the trunk, allow me to introduce you to Diego Castillo, a man with a lower body like a pair of jodhpurs. <laughs> <laughs> If you're just here for the good D. Remarkably, also the Rays. No, I know, it's surprising. Usually guys who look that good don't try this hard. Whoa, hey now. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, that's the end. If you're a person who only watches the postseason, loves ambiguous endings, the latest trends is both from 100 years in the past and 100 years in the future. <laughs> loves cats, memes, even though those didn't exist 100 years ago, hot guys and good D, you should root for the Dodgers, but it's a close call. <laughs> That's the end of this episode and season two of The Bandwagon. Hopefully, next time I see you, I will not be in my guest room. <laughs>